So, the moment we've been waiting for, a leak of the M4 Geekbench benchmark is here for the new iPad Pro M4. Let's see today what improvements we have on this new 10-core CPU over the M3 and older Apple Silicon processors too. So, that's right guys, hot off the press here, I managed to find the scores for the M4 chip and I want to share it with you today for single core and multi-core, multi-core, depending on where you are in the world. And with that, let me show you straight away. So, as you can see right here, we have an iPad 16,16. This is the next generation of iPad. And straight away, you can see here, the scores are very similar across the board. We're getting, on average, around about a 3,750 kind of score, I'm going to say, for single core score, and then for multi-core score, as you can see here, I'm going to say this probably averages around about a 14,620 sort of score. But of course, whatever apps or anything running in the background was running on this iPad at the time also will reflect the scores you can see here. But we do have, like I said, a good kind of average sort of scores coming along here for the new M4 Apple Silicon processor. And this does look really exciting to begin with, but I know what you guys are thinking. You want to see what it is like against, say, the M1, the M2, and the M3, and maybe even, say, the M1 Pro, or even, say, the M1 Max, and other Pro and Max chips out there. And we will look at that right after this. So then guys, just quickly, I want to talk about today's sponsor from CookTech, and this is the brand new CookTech 20 power bank, and it looks absolutely amazing. It has this really cool kind of cyberpunk or futuristic look to it, and I absolutely love it. I love the display on the front here, what tells you how much battery is left inside of it, and also tells you the details about the different ports that are on the top of the actual charger. In fact, there's actually a total of three ports here. There's two USB-C ports and also one USB-A port as well. If you use all three ports at the same time, you can actually output a maximum of 210 watts. And that won't drain too quickly because actually there's a 25,000 milliamp battery inside of this. What is also airplane safe, so you can take it on trips with you to say charge up say your MacBook like you can see right here. In fact, using one of the USB-C ports here, you can actually output up to 140 watts just out of that single port alone. So this will allow you to say charge a 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro really fast with no problems. It's also got a mega battery life built into this too, what allows it to be fully charged up to a thousand charges. The other thing I'd say about this power bank too is also quite light to handle as well and it also just fits in my hand really easily as you can see right here. And if you want to get more information about this new CookTech 20, make sure you check out the details that are in the description of my video right now. And with that, let's head back to the main video. So with that out of the way, like I said, let's compare the M1, the M2, the M3 and the M4 in a chart and see the differences in single core and multi-core scores. And let's take a look here. And straight away, just by looking at this chart, it's amazing to see where we've come from since the end of 2020. And here we are around about three and a half years later with the scores that we are getting now. Now, obviously that M1 chip when it first came out was an eight core CPU. And as you can see here, the score was for multi-core score 8,301 and the single core score was 2,346. And as time has progressed, you can see here, we have leapt up more and more and more and more. And, but I would say the M4 has definitely had the biggest jump between all the chips. So if you're comparing the M4 to the M3, you can even see the difference there. And the main reason behind that, as you can see what's on the side, is obviously the M4 is the first kind of normal M chip to have a 10 core CPU inside of it. Whereas the previous M1, M2 and M3 only had an eight core CPU. 
And just in case you wanted to know, the M4 now, just on CPU performance on a Geekbench 6 benchmarking here, that is 43% faster than M1, and it's also 21% faster than M3 in multi-core scores. And to be deadly honest, that is pretty impressive. But what I will say at this stage, benchmarks are not everything. Obviously, we can see here the jump in performance and everything, but it depends how those cores are utilized and how they are used and how apps use them is where you're going to get the real kind of performance gains or maybe no performance gains. So I will say that at this stage, but obviously a lot of you guys like me who are geeky nerds, we want to see these Geekbench scores. And moving on from that, let me now compare just the M4 to the M1 Pro, the M2 Pro and the M3 Pro. Have a look here. As you can see here, things have changed as well. The original M1 Pro actually had a 10 core CPU inside of it. Like now we have an M4 and this has a 10 core CPU. Obviously efficiency cores and also performance cores are different between them, but obviously the ultimate number of cores is the same now on M4 to the M1 Pro. Obviously this was the maxed out M1 Pro. There was actually an M1 Pro with eight cores inside of it, but we're just comparing say the maxed out versions here because because obviously, yeah, the M4, 10 core, there is a nine core version, but yeah, you get the point. But as you can see right here, the M4 is faster than the M1 Pro. It's slightly ahead than the M2 Pro had a 12 core chip inside of it. What's absolutely amazing, remember this is a 10 core. And then the M3 Pro also has a 12 core on the maximum. You can get the 11 core, but you can see it's just ahead of M4. And this is absolutely crazy. And just to tell you here, M4 is about 17% faster than M1 with those 10 cores inside of it. So it's crazy to think now, if a Mac comes out now and you've got the choice of getting yourself, say, an M4 or even getting yourself an M1 Pro, maybe you go for, towards the M4 because obviously you're going to have all those extra bits and pieces like ray tracing and all of this good stuff too. But then finally, let me show you the last chart. And this is obviously comparing the M4 to the Max chip. So this is the M1 Max, the M2 Max, and the M3 Max, just to see how it compares it. Let's take a look. Now, the M1 Max CPU was extremely similar to the top range M1 Pro CPU. As you can see, it was made out of a 10 core same. So again, you can see the difference here between the M4 and the M1 Max. So obviously, the M4 is ahead in CPU cores. I'm not going to say GPU cores at this stage, but obviously in CPU cores, it is ahead. What's absolutely amazing. It is literally, this is crazy to see this, it's on par with the M2 Max. No word of a lie, I have an M2 Max MacBook Pro and it's coming up at the same average as the M4. What is absolutely crazy to think that. And again, remember that is also a 12 core CPU. It's the same as the M2 Pro at the 12 core CPU. They're around about the same here. So yeah, it's crazy to see that. But then obviously the M3 Max, this is where things change quite a bit. Apple decided to make the M3 Pro and the M3 Max very different in their CPU cores and the 16 core version, as you can see here, is coming up to near a multi-core score of 21 so yeah it's quite crazy to see that you know we're about about three quarters of that amount here with the m4 but i think what i would also note out of this stage is obviously look at the leap here in single core performance as well it's absolutely crazy generally the single core performance is about the same across the board when we do this on geekbench but you can see here that m4 is ahead quite a bit here compared to m3 m2 and m1 with their single cores too. Now, I'm not going to compare this to the Ultra chips because there's just no point in doing that. I think you're getting the idea here comparing it to the Max, to the Pro and the normal chips. You can just see that the difference in speed is phenomenal. How far M4 has come in three and a half years. And I would even say right now for the first time ever, when we get new MacBooks in the very near future, with just the normal M4 inside it. If you have an M1 and you want to upgrade, maybe this is the first time you could do that. And you know, I'm not gonna say that M1 is slow at all, because it really, really isn't. And in fact, I made a video about the MacBook Air with M1 and why it's still brilliant in 2024, and check that out just above me now. 
But the main thing what I'd say is if you were possibly looking for an upgrade, we can see here with that 43% just in CPU performance that it is a big improvement there, that you would probably start to see some differences, especially we've got other new technologies like ray tracing and things like that with graphics. And talk about graphics, let me show you the Metal Core scores. Now, I've only compared it to the M1, the M3, and the M4, because the M1 and the M2 weren't that much difference, really, in graphics, in my opinion. But M3 obviously brought out ray tracing and all that great stuff as well. But obviously, the Geekbench Metal benchmark takes into account. So as you can see here, with M1 to M4, there is a big difference there. There is a huge difference. And even with M3, M4 is definitely ahead there. And just in case you actually really wanted to know, it means that M4 is 23% faster than M3 in graphics, and it's also 40% faster than M1. And you've got to remember here, guys, that obviously the original M1 had an eight core GPU inside of it. And then with the M3, we have a 10 core GPU, and then we have another 10 core GPU inside the M4 this time round. So again, I think you can see my point. If you do have an M1 and looking to upgrade, potentially you could do that, or you could easily get another year or two out of it before that stage. Like I said, I'm not saying M1 is slow. It's just for the first time as a tech reviewer here to say if you were potentially looking to get yourself a new Mac or anything like this with a new chip inside of it, is it worth it? For the first time, I'm actually going to say possibly. But, you know, before that, I would have said no, there was no point doing any upgrades whatsoever with the M2 and the M3. And it's also the same, for example, the same with, say, M1 Pro. M1 Pro, for example, if you want to just get yourself a new Mac but wanted to have a very similar kind of power, then, yeah, I would actually go and get yourself an M4. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? But then, obviously, the right thing to do would get yourself an M4 Pro. And funny enough, that actually leads me on to predicting the benchmark scores for M4 M4 Pro and M4 Max. Now I'm going to say right away off the bat, I don't want to disappoint you because let me explain something to you. If we look at the M4, it has a 10 core setup in it now. It's made up of six efficiency cores, four performance cores, and it also has the 10 core GPU. But then if we compared to the M1, the M2 and the M3, things are very different then how the cores are actually made up. All three of these chips come with four efficiency cores and four performance cores compared to the 10 that we now have in M4. And then for GPU cores, that gets even more confusing. The M1 actually started out with seven GPU cores or eight GPU cores, it depended. And then that went up to 10 or nine or 10 GPU cores with M2. And then M3 gave you 10 GPU cores. And yeah, it's come a real bit of a mixed bag now where Apple decide just to throw in cores wherever they want. Like take the M1 Max, for example, have a look here. It was made up of two efficiency cores and eight performance cores at that time. And then you had a choice of 24 or 32 GPU cores. But now the M3 Max is a choice of 14 or 16 CPU cores, meaning there's four E cores, then there's either 10 or 12 performance cores. And then the GPU is made up of either 30 to 40 cores. It has completely changed in how the setup of how cores work. Remember, with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max and the M2 Pro and the M2 Max, they had the same amount of CPU cores in them as well. But then when M3 decides to change the M3 to have, or the M3 Pro to have less CPU cores towards the M3 Max. And the point is, how on earth are we going to be able to figure out the future of what Apple are going to provide us in the M4 Pro and the M4 Max in cores and if they're going to give us more performance cores or give us less efficiency cores or give us more efficiency cores more gpu cores you get the idea here it gets so so confusing and with that i think you can see where i'm coming from here it's almost impossible to work out what the m4 pro or the m4 max is going to be and what I would also say on that note is that if there are any other YouTubers or reporters, or like, for example, one with a big Mac smile on their face, then I would 
take that report with a big grain of salt if they do talk about this. And hopefully they actually watch this video and agree with me. It's going to be very hard to work out M4 Pro and M4 Max with the amount of cores and how Apple decides just to chuck them in wherever they want and work out the speeds from that. Because it's really, really hard to do that now. There's no kind of template going forward. Maybe Apple are trying to fool us with that. Who knows? But the main thing I'm going to say, sadly to disappoint you, I cannot work out the M4 Pro or the M4 Max kind of benchmark speeds that are going to be happening in the future. But I think the main thing to take away from today is that M4 on average for just CPU is about 23% faster than M3 and about 17% more faster in graphics GPU than the M3 too. And that for the first time ever, when the M4 comes out in say MacBooks going forwards, if there was a chance to upgrade your M1 machine, maybe now is the time you could do that. You don't have to. It's the option maybe to last say, yeah, you could do with an upgrade. But with that, I'd love to know your guys' thoughts too. Put them down in the comments below. Are you impressed by the M4 Geekbench scores that we got here or are you quite disappointed with it? Let me know. And with that too, guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. Also, if you want to hear the latest Apple news, reviews and comparisons, please also make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell too. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.